Welcome, welcome to another episode of Forgecraft 2. You might notice that there's a lot more floors to this tower now. Let me go outside and get a bird's eye view. A ghast's eye view. Whoa, oh gosh. Morph has this thing where it lets you start flying immediately when you change to a, uh, a, a, a monster that can fly. But then as soon as it completes the transformation, it turns off flying and turns it back on again. So you drop a little bit. Um, anyway, the tower was originally that floor and that floor. I've now progressed it up a third and fourth as well as the roof. I've decided to do that because the original island where we started off this little spit of land is no more. I have returned it to its former glory. Uh, sands, a couple of sand blocks right there. Um, I have filled in the basement completely, the elevator and the um, ladder shaft completely. And I topped it off with a little bit of sand. I might put a little bit towards the back, just a third layer. Make it look a little bit more interesting. But uh, And I, I'm tempted to plant a tree there, you know, a little tropical isle. But for the most part, I returned it back to where it once was. Uh, it served as a home for us very, very well for a little bit. But, um, it's, uh, we don't need it anymore. Now we have the nice big tower. Let's go underwater. Um, we have four floors. I'm actually thinking about knocking the floor out between this one, between these two, this floor right here. So three and four would be one tall space and just use it for, for storage drawers or a storage drawer storage system idea that I've got. That's going to be a combination of AE2, a very small AE2 system, like less than a couple of blocks and storage drawers. We'll see though. Um... Yeah, this is our newest addition to the base. This is the agricultural area, the ag lab, and uh, the ag lab has been finished out as best as I can. Right now, I'm considering maybe using some carpenter's blocks and sloping it down a little bit, making it a little bumpy in certain parts, but I'm not sure. I do want to do a raised garden bed over here in some of these little areas, but I'm still figuring that one out. Um... Yes, hello, Mr. Squid. Let's go down there real quick. Uh, this is now the airlock from the water. <laughs> this is when you're underwater. This is how you get back in the base. We just, boop, creak, pop. So, um, quick additions. This hasn't changed much. Coke oven. Blast furnace. You notice I have blocks of cold coke in there. I did that because I had literally more than one, slightly more than one stack of cold coke. I've got some fluid tanks of creosote right here that I've been using to make treated wood for various things. We'll go over that in a minute. This is a magma crucible. I use this to burn netherrack so that I can make lava. So, I burn netherrack in this to make my lava, which is stored up to 10 buckets stored here. Then it automatically ports up the right side to this seared tank right here, which holds another four buckets. And... Under the floor, up, there's a liquid pipe that it's keeping this topped off. This always stays full. And then I've got up to 14 buckets of other liquid storage going on. Uh, so yeah, this means that my uh, smeltery controller, my smeltery is always full of lava. That works great. I have a nice automated system that's still been working here. Uh, this, I think, is mostly new. This is a combination of immersive engineering. I'm going to have a whole episode where we go over immersive engineering later. But for right now, um, this is immersive engineering. Um, I'm just going to... Do I have the hammer? I do have the hammer. Um, yeah, I don't think that's a... Anyway, um, this is their equivalent of a battery. It's towards 100,000 RF. Okay. This is the input side. This is the output side. You can actually adjust it with the hammer. Uh, the engineer's hammer you just right click on the side and the dots change colors or something um these little things are the in out points for the wires this is an lv connector low voltage there's a medium voltage and a high voltage as well as a transformer um all sorts of fun stuff there's even this is a low voltage capacitor there is a medium and a high voltage capacitor if we go down one more level this is the bottom level to the elevator line um we have basically two thermal electric generators these are passive power 
They take the difference between the water source blocks and the lava source blocks, and they generate electricity from that. So basically, this is connecting this one to that one, and then that one carries all the electricity straight up to the capacitor right there. And you'll also notice this wire going under the floor. That goes over to the bottom of that magma crucible. There is one of those connectors across the bottom. And that powers the magma crucible, which uses a lot of power. So this is our primary power generation. Now, over here in the new ag lab, we've got, I've got a little bit of wheat crops going on because I'm using it to make this stuff called, whoop, it turned to sand. Blast it. Thought that might be a problem. Let's go get... A block of dirt. I was testing out this stuff called fertile soil from MFR. Problem is, it seems like it only grows for a little bit. It will grow certain things for a little bit, bit before it turns into sand. So uh, that's not going to work out for us. Basically, this is my one tree tree farm. We have this thing. This is a water wheel, a water mill. And this generates 33 RF per tick, okay? That RF per tick comes in through this kinetic dynamo that harnesses the power. You can have these things three wide, by the way. Um, like three water mills side by side. Um, then you have, I have the LV wire connector coming out. It goes down the wire, and it connects to these connectors on the back of these two autonomous activators. Um, I'm just going to even out the numbers a little bit. So, this autonomous activator is randomly using, it goes through and randomly right clicks when there is space available for it to put a sapling down. This one has a lumber axe, silver head, whoops, silver head, amethyst large plate, obsidian tough binding, and a steel tough rod. Um, I couldn't come up with a better rod material. <laughs> so, um, but the silver axe is easy to repair. I have tons of silver that I can use. And what this does is when a tree grows, let me see if I can. First, let me explain it, okay? This is a, is a comparator. The comparator is taking the signal out and using that to power this autonomous activator. It is set to only respond to a high control. So it's not constantly sitting there swinging the axe. It only swings the axe when the tree pops because of this redstone repeater with a lever. The redstone repeater is sending a signal through the tree trunk. So when a tree grows, this gets power, that gets power, chops down the tree, this loses power, that loses power. It's actually kind of simple. The only thing I don't have is a way to artificially boost the growth of the trees. Um, I do not have a way to do that automatically or passively. Right now, I'm having to do it with this watering can. You see? That gets power. The tree gets chopped. Everything gets pulled into this vacuum chest. As those leaves decay, more and more saplings will get pulled in there. The wood gets sent over here. I've got this filtered for birch wood only. Of course, this is locked. And then this is filtered for saplings only. So the saplings come in here. Every once in a while, I come back in and redistribute this. But basically, the sa I, I could have wanted to do that for slot only. And just have the rest of them fill up, then put it to round robin. We'll see. Um, but basically, this is my real simple tree farm. Now, the only problem I have every once in a while is that a sapling will fall on the other side of the vacuum chest. That vacuum chest should go out about six blocks. So, one, two, it'll go all the way out to the wall, I think. Two, three, four, five, yeah. So, but sometimes stuff falls, then gets pulled in, and it gets caught right on the edge under this thing. But that's fine. If we lose a sapling or two, that's okay. I think we're still netting a lot. Um, and you'll if we watch, we'll probably see one or two of them drop under like this. But this water mill is actually generating 33 RF per tick. It's powering both of those with power to spare. So I think what I might, I might end up doing is putting an LB capacitor on it and harnessing some of that power. So we can run some other machines here in the actual 
uh, garden in the ag lab. Um, but this this entire space is power independent, basically. So we have the water mill. I built this wooden structure to make it look kind of like it was supported and attached to the wall, but I still really don't get the impression. To me, it looks like it's just leaning up against the wall. You know? But there's nothing I can do about that right now. Um, I will address that later. Maybe come back and adjust it a little bit. But yeah. So, we actually have... A fully automated tree system. It is not the fastest tree system in the world. I've been running it for about an hour now, and I've only got a, a little over a stack and a quarter. But it does do the job. This base is chunk-loaded now, which means if I let this run, I can come back, and I don't have to worry about continuously going out to m get more trees. If I want to, I can adjust what kind of tree saplings I'm using here and here. And later, if I wanted to, I could even put another barrel here and put an overflow of barrel for saplings that is lower priority. I'll make this like, um, I can make this priority 10 and leave this one, this barrel is priority zero, which means saplings would go here first, then to the other barrel. And that might work, so we don't have to worry about the autonomous activator backing up, then this backing up. But I don't think this thing's going to be fast enough. I'm going to have to come back and check on it on a regular basis anyway, just to make sure I repair this. I don't think this thing's fast enough that I'm going to have to worry about a whole bunch of saplings clogging up the actual um, system. We'll see, though. It is still a process of refinement. Now, before anybody says anything, I know I can use MFR. That's not the point. I'm not trying to find the absolute best or the most efficient or the most optimal. Sometimes it's a thought exercise. I wanted to see if there was a different way to do a tree farm. If there was a different way to do a slightly smaller scale tree farm. And this is the solution I came up with. I think this is the better idea right now for me because A, it was a really good thought exercise. It was a good, is this possible? Two autonomous activators, a vacuum chest, and a little bit of redstone. That's really not that expensive in the grand scheme of things. It's actually fairly power minimal. These things, ooh, there it goes. These things barely use up power. See, power stored and power usage. I don't know why it says maximum. Um, the better idea for me right now is to have a state cell that switches every time, or not a state cell, but I don't know. Um, basically, what I might do is get this and pull this off. I might take the redstone line back around here. Originally, I had it going around the back, and if I do that, I could take it around here with a delay. No, because I still can't get to that because that's in the way. Hmm, I was thinking I'd have to raise the piping up. I could always take it underground or just run this over the top. What I've considered doing is putting a repeater right here with a three-tick delay and then have this come up and over, which means that basically this would receive redstone signal at the same time as this. Well, th this would receive redstone signal when the tree grew to chop the tree. And then this would be getting the signal slightly delayed. So a couple of seconds after the tree got chopped down, this would still have a redstone signal to place a tree. Then it would stop. Because right now this is just using power, you see? Because it's trying to place a new sapling, even though it can't. This isn't using any power because it's not redstone signal. So that is a refinement I might do. Put a repeater on top of this actual vacuum chest, if I can. And put some redstone up to it and then across from it with this redstone out, red LR wire. But yeah. I think it's going to be good. I'm still working on the looks for this room, but Rorax pitched in considerably. Rorax actually suggested the struts um, in the middle of the walls. I had the struts in the corners, but she suggested the struts in the middles of the wall to actually give it a bit more three-dimensional kind of look. She also recommended these little feet right here, these wedge slopes that I use for feet to make it look more like the roof was actually anchored to the floor and it, didn't, it couldn't just float off in any minute because I didn't want too clean of a dividing line from the top half to the bottom half. I didn't want it to look like you could just lift this off like a lid. Because that's not what it's supposed to look like. Oh, that's hasn't fallen yet. So, real quick, 
this is going to be the next project, the next building. Let's go upstairs real quick. Um, I am actually going to, uh, this is basically kind of the entryway area that I'm going to make for a structure that's going to go out this way. And it's actually going to kind of merge into the side of the hill a bit. Um, this is actually going to be the tech lab. This is going to be where I'm going to have all the big machines that are actually going to be like rock crushers. It's going to be a six high floor. Um, each floor is going to be six blocks high to accommodate for um, being able to uh, uh, being able to actually, you know, make sure you have enough clearance for big projects and stuff like that. So this is going to probably only be two floors, maybe three, but I think probably two. And I'll probably do stairs on this instead of elevators because I do not want to use elevators all over the place. I do actually like having some stairs and ladders and stuff like this, but this is going to be a very technical building. It's going to have the bigger machines in it. I will move the blast furnace and the uh, Coke oven and the creosote system all into that building. I'll put a bigger storage tank for the creosote so I can actually have more of it stored for more in, um, immersive engineering projects long term. That is also when where we'll start investigating immersive engineering in some of the machines. Now, the next pro the other project that I need to do, you can see this, uh, I think it's this vertical pillar right here. Can't quite, nope, it should be. I think that's a little too far over, but basically the mage's tow uh, tower is going to come right up out of here, basically going to pull straight up it's going to kind of be emerged in with the side of the build of the uh of the hill a lot of the space is going to be blended into the landscape and um let's change back so the major's tower is actually going to stretch up i'm going to try and see if i can expand out the basement and put my blood altar down here and then have the that way the tower does not have to be as big um, that is something I'm going to try and shoot for. We'll see if that's going to work or not. I'm not sure, but that's the goal right now. I'll probably have stairs that go down into a larger space and then actually have a walkway along the side with stairs that go up to the tower and the larger space and the lower larger space will be my blood altar. I'm probably just going to keep it simple and go self-sacrificed as best I can. Apparently there are some potential upgrades to that coming to blood magic in the near future. Um, Oh, gosh. Next episode of Wednesday, I really want to delve into immersive engineering and go into some of the power and some of the machines, which means I need to have the tech lab space done by then. So I am going to work as hard as I can to get that done. Um, until then, uh, I have ideas for a storage system, but I don't want to get into it yet because I'm going to have to build up some materials before I can use it. That's one reason why I started the tree farm. Um, you'll notice I've got about 43 birchwood logs there. That is from just going out and using my that lumber axe. I've got some uh, spruce and some fir and some oak. I just went out and found some trees and killed them. But this, I want this, this to build up, slowly build up some birchwood so we can use it for a storage drawer sorting system. And uh, that's the general idea at least. Why aren't you? There we go. Okay. So, yeah. We're going to circle back around to that later, though. The next project I have to do is going to be the Tech Lab and Immersive Engineering. We'll get into that next. I will catch you guys later. Have a great week. Have a great Monday. And I will see you then. Bye-bye.